Okay, so um, these will have not been vetted by me, so we'll put on our glasses and see what we, uh, the first one is, I can never remember specific lines, but what, do you have a favorite Emily Gilmore line? I, I, some have been brought to me. I don't know that I really have mm. uh, uh, that, that one about uh, then buy me a bow and drive me to Reno. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't even remember saying that. I didn't even remember that scene, but it seems to be very popular, so why not? That, that's my favorite one. Great. Why did you change your name from Carol to Kelly? I did that because I'd been, when I was a dancer still, I was in the chorus of a show, and uh, I had uh, one of the, the actors, it was really a singer in the show, as we would pass each other in the hallway and uh, downstairs during the scenes, you know, upstairs, and we would just make up characters as we greeted one another. And uh, he had a couple of characters, and I had one who was particularly obnoxious. Her name was Kelly Westbrook, and she was a very spoiled, rich girl, and she was saying, because Daddy said I can't have my fourth horse, and I really want a fourth horse. I mean, that kind of thing. And so this little group was a little clique I was part of. We'd hang out after the shows and stuff. There were four or five of us, and that whole group started calling me Kelly. And then by the time we got to the chorus line thing, Michael started calling me Kelly. And of course, if Michael called me Kelly, he was God. I was Kelly. <laughs> And so I left it like that. I was happy to change my name, but uh, I mean, I, I didn't really plan on it because I was Carol Bishop for all those years until I joined SAG. And they sent my card back. I, you had to give them an alternative name. So I had Carol Bishop and then my married name at the t time, Carol Bishop Miller. And they sent me a card that said Carol Bishop Miller. And I called them. I said, no, 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 no. And, you can just, uh, and they said, no, there is a Carol Bishop, which I've never found her, by the way. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I kind of left it. But uh, then I decided I really would change it. I even talked to Michael Bennett about it, and he wisely said, don't change it until after the Tonys, which I was going to do, going to do. And then we're sitting out there in the audience. We've rehearsed the, the opening number for the Tony night and the whole thing. We're just sitting hanging around. And one of the people from the Tony committee comes trotting down the aisle, and he leans over and he said, uh, when your uh, nomination is uh, announced, would you want to be Carol Bishop or Kelly Bishop? And I said, Kelly. Because <laughs> I thought, national television. What better way to say I'm changing my name, world? <laughs> You know, so I did. I didn't run it by Michael. I'm sure he was a little miffed, but it it worked for me. So why not? Anyway. I have a uh, yes. I have a cousin named Lauren Graham, and she had to change her name. I feel bad. Okay, because <laughs> it was taken. Um, what is something new? I love this that you learned about yourself over the course of working on the book. Um, I'm really smart. Uh, <laughs> yes. My memory's not as bad as I thought it was. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed my life, and I have to say I've looked at it. I'm, I'm not lauding myself too much, but I've been really fair and honest and hardworking and willing to put up with a lot of stuff, including those bad jobs. That I, you know, There's one thing I will tell you. You always learn more from a bad job than you do from a good job. It, it's just, it really is. It's a learning experience, you know. So uh, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of impressed with myself on that level is that I kept going and going and going and I wasn't going to stop because I had a dream and nobody's going to take that dream away from me even though it changed from being a ballerina to being an actress. Nobody's going to take it away from me. They can't have it. That's why I'm going to die on stage. <laughs> Um, hi, Kelly. As a young professional in the entertainment industry, what advice do you have someone, for someone five years into their career? How do you know when you're ready for the next opportunity? That's from Addison. I was supposed to say people's names. Oopsies. How, how are you? What is it? Ready? So I guess it's if you're five years into your career, maybe you're looking for what's the next step. Um, what you're you always looking. You're yeah. always looking. If the opportunity is there, and I think a lot of people make the mistake, uh, and it's, there's no real fault in this, but it's good to be alert. The opportunities are there, and you miss them. You just don't see them. 
And if it's there, give it a shot, give it a try. And I, I've said to a lot of younger actors, it's a hard business, there's no question about it, and you have to be tough. And you have to be able to take rejection because how many people in, in the civilized world, uh, civilian world, let's say, uh, are used to being told no, 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 thank you, no, 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 and still come back the next day and go, okay, how about today? Uh, and you have to be able to do that. You have to let it go and move on, and the opportunities are there, and you just keep plugging away and trying and doing and knowing that you love that dream and sticking with it. And at some point, and I've talked to actors about this as well, that it's getting to be just too hard. And I know there, that you have to do the, the office job and the waitressing job and all of that. There's, if it's not fun anymore, when it becomes tedious and it's really not fun just doing it, then find something else. And you can probably find something kind of within the business. So you can still be around the same fabulous people and, and, uh, and be creative and, and do something else. But just keep doing it as long as you want to. Why not? Yeah. yeah, I found it helpful to have a small goal, and this just, I didn't, I just did this naturally, which is I wanted a couple lines on a soap opera or something. I, like, I, I, I would just picture what I felt was attainable given where I was, and then get go a little bit further the next time, and then, you know, went from being a guest star to being a series regular, like, and, and, and now it, it is more about Am I going to enjoy the day? Am I going to enjoy the people? I've already, we've already had so much. Like now, I just really want to be part of the creative team rather than, that's more important to me than like yeah. starring in something. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm not looking for any uh, stunning role or anything, uh, but I really want to do good work. I mean, I want to do good work from me. I want to do good acting, but I also want to do good work, and so that means I need good writers, and that's, that's where we were so lucky because we got one of the best in the business, and uh, it's just a joy, you know? Yeah. What advice would you give your, what advice would your older self give your younger self? Hmm. Uh, stop being such a pushover. That, and that is more in my personal life. D don't do that. And then finally, with my wonderful husband, Lee Leonard, I finally got to a point and I said, okay, I'm done with that. I, he, he's probably out there. He might be out there. There might be two of them out there. I might never meet them. That's okay. I have a certain standard now, and I'm not going to go below that. And if he doesn't come along, too bad. And if he does, lucky him. And he, <laughs> he, he did. And he, and he, and he came along. And he came Lee along. Came along. And, and then I did the smartest thing I ever done as a woman, uh, a single young woman who enjoyed having affairs and such. Uh, <laughs> is I let him chase me. I had never thought about not letting a guy know that I was really interested in him, and I just kind of said, I was demure, right? Didn't it work? <laughs> <laughs> and I discovered something as a woman that uh, all really smart women know, men like the chase. They were cavemen, they were hunters. <laughs> you know? So that's okay, say, well, maybe. And because now you're more alluring. And then you say, well, I can't make it tonight. And well, well how about tomorrow? He did that too. I go, how about Friday night? And go, and it was legitimate. I had something to do. I said, I'm, I'm busy uh, Friday night. He said, how about Saturday? And I go, whoa, okay, all right. I, I, I think I can clear my calendar, you know. Uh, and, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> how long were you married? We were married for 38 years. <laughs> great, just great, yeah. I got to meet him and hang out with you guys a couple of times, and he was really special. He was. He was amazing. Just amazing. He taught me so much. Yeah. You know, he was so smart and fair, outspoken. Boy, mm. he, he, I spent a lot of our relationship, if somebody would come up and say something stupid, leaning into him saying, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. Because <laughs> I was sure someday somebody was going to slug him. Because he'd say it, he'd say it. He, he was amazing. He wasn't rude. I mean, he didn't swear. He would just, in one sentence, kind of lay him right out. <laughs> you know? yeah. And his daughter Cheryl is 
still yes, there, Cheryl, there, his there. daughter, yeah. uh, who spent a lot of time with us um, all through our marriage, and she really fronted for me when I was going out of town being an actress and looking after Lee in the house. And then, as of course, he got sick and it, you know kept continually getting worse. She took a leave of absence from her job and took care of the house and everything. And then after he passed away, uh, you know, she went back down, but then I ended up getting sick, and she was back up again and looking after me and looking after the house, and basically, she lives with me now, which is great. Um, we, are, we are coming to our end here. Um, I know, I could do this, and perhaps we should, every night for weeks at a time. <laughs> right into the 92nd Street Y and see what they have to say about that. Um, I really love, near the end of the book, you talk about um, going to see Hamilton and um, when it was still at the Public Theater and they did a, um, a sort of tribute to a chorus line. Um, do, you, do you have glasses? Do I have glasses? I want to read a little piece of it. It doesn't make sense for me to read your book. No, it does. Okay. <laughs> Just lower your voice. I can't. It's, this, is all, this is all. It doesn't go that low. Um, I just love this story of uh, you seeing a dancer in in Hamilton who uh, made you think, um, "Wow, that was that was me up there." <laughs> and um, at some point while I watched her, I was blindsided out of nowhere by a deep ache of sadness as the thought hit me, that used to be me up there. Then, just as suddenly, the same thought hit me with the greatest wave of joy and gratitude. That used to be me up there. <laughs> and then after you, um, you went to, to meet her, uh, they, they brought all the chorus line. Um, after the Hamilton Curtain Calls, their cast recreated the opening number of a chorus line, lining up across the stage, holding their headshots in front of their faces and singing, Who Am I Anyway? Am I My Resume? There were lots of tears and hugs on that stage, followed by all of us mingling around, giving me a perfect opportunity to walk over to that young chorus dancer, the girl I used to be. I'm so excited for you, I told her. This is thrilling. I know what it's like, and I want you to relish it. Inhale it. Live it. Grab every moment of it. You're so talented, and I don't want you to ever get to a point where you think, I don't really feel like doing the show tonight. Do it. Give yourself a chance to be adored one more time, because you will be, and you'll carry this exquisite experience with you for the rest of your life. To this day, when I occasionally fall into that sadness trap, I think back on that night and that lesson. Don't cry because you think your best days are gone. Smile because you had them in the first place. Oh, <laughs> I think we say good night. I just want to say thank you again. Thank you to all of you whose incredible enthusiasm and love and joy is what brings us together again and again. We, we relish every opportunity. And Kelly, I just love you so much. This is a beautiful um, piece of work. And uh, you inspire me every day. And I'm so lucky I get to be your pretend daughter. <laughs>